Up, down? Yep. Yeah. You cool? Yep. Up. Okay, we will start on defense. You start on defense, we'll start on this side. Okay. That's right. Okay. Cheers. Thanks. Huddy Fuller, one of the captains of Extinction. Mate, a, a bit of a disrupted introduction and, and build up to this tournament. You've only trained together a couple of times? Yeah, yeah. So um, the main core trained probably four or five times. We had more scheduled, but our floods in Queensland kind of screwed up our plans there. But um, we've done pretty well. We've got a few extra players and I feel like we're gelling really, really well and we're, we're, um, we're really um, aspirational for, um, for this game and tournament. Brilliant. Thank you very much for your time, Huddy. Good luck yes. for the game. We're going to go straight to your commentators, Andy Moroni and uh, Anna Stoddard. Thank you, Dan. Good morning, Anna. Another great day in store. You must be excited. Oh, I definitely am, Andy. It's a nice day. There's a little bit of a breeze. The sun's peeking out through the clouds. I'm very excited. Uh, you're well rested after the extra hours sleep. I am indeed. <laughs> Forgot all about that. I didn't. I was. What, I was like, why did I wake up at six thirty? Oh yeah. Okay. Extra hour. That always helps. Hopefully, it'll help these two teams. Uh, we've got Ironbark out of New South Wales in the Hills District playing Extinction out of Queensland, uh, as Dan said. And as you would have seen, uh, Queensland Extinction will be coming out on defence to the right of screen with New South Wales Ironbarks receiving the disc. We'll obviously flip that at half when the first team reaches eight. Uh, what's your pick for? this morning's game between Ironbark and Extinction, Anna? Uh, I think it's a bit difficult. It's been a while since I've seen Extinction play, and as we heard, they've had a bit of a disrupted lead-up to this tournament. But I'd say Ironbark has two. The Sydney's been rained out pretty much for the past month or so as well. So I think it might come down to natural chemistry, who's got the connections built over time, and maybe who's just vibing with each other t this morning. Yeah, you're right. It will be an interesting dynamic. Yeah. Ironbark... A younger team, but very much an established club. Whereas Extinction, we can see a few imports. So they're based in Queensland. I'm, I'm looking at Mile Hingey. I'm looking at Ruben Berg. These are players obviously aren't aren't Queenslanders. Although Mile mm. seems to move around every couple of weeks, so I don't, I'm not sure what state he's in. But I believe they are imports. But also, there's probably a bit more diversity of experience. You know, we've got Ruben's played for 15 years, and I don't think the Ironbarks ne necessarily have that depth of experience. So I think it'd be a really interesting kind of two different styles and two different dynamics between each of the teams. Yeah, and particularly being the second day, state of play is a bit more known now, so the game's become more important. Um, you're more aware of what's going to happen in the seeding rounds, so yeah, might be a bit of nerves coming to play too. Looks like Mile Hingey coming down with the pull. Ironbark start on O first. Nice pull gets almost to the end zone. Fielded by Ironbark. Tim G in the middle of the field. Race to Cheng. Up the line. Oh, bubbles it a bit. Back to Tam. Tim G just in front of the line. Pops one through. Casey Lye with the goal, and that's a nice easy one to start off for uh, Ironbark. I think you're spot on. If you're Extinction, that is exactly what you want. Just a nice, easy, structured first point. Not take too much pressure in. Exactly what they would have wanted. Pretty much up the same side of the field too, so not too much defensive pressure. Not at all. I don't think there was any kind of contested grab and probably not a stall count past three, so... No. Extinction warming up. Ironbark's dream start. Let's see what Extinction can do now. Do have a series of games this morning. Uh, over on the other field, uh, we have Chile versus Mammoth. So we'll keep those scores. Chile scoring the first of the match there. We'll keep you updated on those scores as they come to us. And I believe it's uh, Mitchell Hanna, one of the Hanna brothers, is brother Matthew Hanna. Uh, one of the players to watch, we've been told. So looking forward to seeing what those two lads can bring. Passing and picking up the disc. Looks like a junk, Hanna. Yep. Stuck in the corner straight away. A hammer to get out. 
and it bounces out of the hands of Lotting. So Ironbark have it is pretty close to their own end zone. Great chance here for Ironbarks to take a, a jump start. Dougal picks it up and centers the disc. Just like that. Yep. A rolling catch. And that's two down really quickly. So the Ironbark's electing to play a zone in their first uh, defensive point. Really interesting because there's not too much wind just yet. We've seen it kind of pick up and, and calm at different times um, throughout the course of yesterday at least. Yeah, and the hammer was actually reasonably accurate and not fluttering in the wind. I think it was more just a, a catch that bounced out of the hands than anything too affected by the elements. Yeah, as we head over to Dan Clinton. Thanks, Andy. Uh, just talking quickly with Mile. He lived in Queensland uh, between 2010 and 2015. He played for Mammoth, obviously at Div 1 during that time. He only decided to play Nationals three weeks ago, sent a bunch of emails out, and uh, Extinction were the ones who got back to him. So he decided to come and uh, throw the cleats on. I'd take Mile. I'd take Mile. Mile emailed me three weeks before. I said, I'd rather run, have you run on my team, running around, doing 18Ks a day, rather than run against him. So. Uh, wise pick up from Extinction. Let's see if they can uh, utilize that and get on the board. As you see the pool come down. And let's send it to Berg. Berg gets it out wide. Bode thinks about throwing it deep but pops it off instead. Inji throws it back to Berg. Fakes one himself. He's stuck on the sideline with the zone now. Throws it behind to Berg, hoping to swing it around. Does throw the arc and flick. Finally, some movement They're forward to here. Collingwood. <gasps> oh. oh, and it's smacked down by Watt. They were out there. That's a real shame because they did have the numbers if they looked in the right position but tried to move it through the middle. Watt picking up the disc. Sends a big flick out the back. Can it be chased down? No. Just out of reach of Brunelli Brondex. Picked up straight away by Duvin Warden. Got to move quickly if they want to break this Good zone. Point. Hingy sends it deep. Oh, and it's just bounced out of the hands of Ben Rossum. Excellent put, though. That's why you, you answer the email. When my emails you three weeks before, you go, you got to put full, uh, flat, full field back hands. <laughs> yeah, sure. But, uh, yeah, it, uh, extinction not adjusting to the zone. Like, you can kind of tell that they've probably not had many trainings because that those connections and that dynamic, yeah. especially in a zone offense, is so important. I'm no marking their end zone here. Matt Hanna throws a tricky one. It's caught with a flying grab. Not much cuts coming from upfield. Finally finds one out wide. They're out long. Rayside sends one very low. And it's caught just above the ground. Reset backwards to what? Hanna. Fakes a big back end. Sends one across field. It's a big flick. That's caught by extinction. They want to move quickly. They don't want to let this defense set. Berg centering the disc. Bode out to Bursting House. Inji. Cheeky hammer across the field to Berg. Great throw. And a flick. Go oh again. no. Go again. Go again. Is it caught in? Is Collingwood that went for the grab? I think he, I think that, he's in. That looked like a trailing foot that was in. Oh, the oh, advisors right They've caught there. goals. They've called a goal. Well done. That's a great effort to put Instinction on the board. 2-1. <laughs> yep, there we go. Had to earn it. Everyone's happy. Made it hard for himself more than anything, but... Yeah. Hey, you're on the highlight reel now, <laughs> young blood, so take that. It's too boring the first time. And as you called, and a really nice uh, cheeky hammer from Mile Hingy to actually open up that space uh, for Berg to throw. To throw the goal, eventually. That's two dot points in the application now. Full field back end, cheeky hammers. Absolutely. Yeah. He'll probably send out some uh, applications for Div 1. <laughs> That's the way he's going. <laughs> See the throw from uh, Matt Hanna. Caught a little bit of air. Really nice grab. 
And then he follows up his good work. Does Hunter Collingwood. Just <laughs> keeping it in. It's our second chance to see Extinction's defence now. See if they've able to set themselves a little more and slow down Ironbark. Maybe put a bit more pressure on. Nice pull. It's caught. Sent into the field straight away. Looks like there's a bit of a zone on. Out to Tam. Hannah and Tam popping it back and forth. Nice popping. Out wide. On the other side of the field. Casey Y. Fuller, Huddy Fuller needs to come in there. He's, he's playing too too loose in that wall. Yeah, they're getting just down Got the, the line, but there's a block as they try to throw it through the cup. Yeah, Ironbark's popping really good, sending a lot of players in for a, a close throw, which we call a pop. But uh, uh, Extinction managed to get the turn, so they have a chance now for a break as Fuller looks to wind up, doesn't. Intercepted straight away by Braden Cheng. There's a miscommunication there, clearly. I don't think uh, Mark Donnelly actually even knew that the throw had been released. No. From Fuller. He'd turned his back already, which is just one of those things. They'll have a chat about it, work it out. At least they got the D. So Fuller brought the disc in. You'll see 47 in the stack. He comes out. Fuller really likes it as an option, but <laughs> he's, he's uh, running away. He's gone. <laughs> So not a lot you can do. That just tends to happen. It's unlucky. Yep. Double happiness for Chang too. Got the block in the goal. You can already see some natural chemistry in Ironbark just yeah, from that. Sense. They're instantly mindset changed to O and able to quickly capitalise. <laughs> Sun starting to peek through, burn off some of the dampness from overnight. Iron, to be honest, as we see the first brick of the day, that'll land out of bounds, so Extinction will get to take that. About 15 metres in, directly in front. All right. Timothy Hunt-Smith taking it to the brink part. A little surprised to see the, the zone being played because yeah. the conditions are gorgeous. Flick sent long straight away. Wow. It's caught, wow. and then thrown a blade into the ground. Reese Lotting took a great grab, but probably just a little rush of blood to the head. Looked to throw straight away. Didn't have a count. No pressure. That's an yep. unforced error. Unfortunate for extinction. Ironbark trying to get out of their end zone. Nice. It's a flick up to Rochow. Play a very free on the line. And a big flick sent. Rochelle out deep. Nice and easy. And that's I think that's another break by him. Oh, it is. It'll be sent back. We'll go back, so let's see if there's a travel here. Uh, uh, lifted his foot. Yeah, okay. I don't know if the disc had been released. Anyway, close enough. Call's been made. Daniel, who has it back, chooses the centre at this time. Dougal sends one himself. He's caught one hand and jumped in by Adam Tan. Gives himself a little clap too. Good on you, young fella. Doesn't work the first time. Try the exact same thing again. Yeah, and a timeout about to be called here, and I think that's a good idea because right now and it'd be great for Dan to, to listen in and see if he can pick up what the message is Extinction's defense isn't, isn't there they're allowing easy unders but then they're also getting beat deep uh, and I know one of them came back on a travel but you can't be allowing both the deep shots to go and that easy flow under you've got to try and take at least one away so that might be the adjustment we can't uh, hear Huddy Fuller there who's delivering the message to the team but Dan certainly can and he'll come to us shortly conversely for Ironbarks you got the perfect start, really. I don't think there's too much that they would uh, they'd need to adjust. Anna? Yep. Keep the foot on the gas. 
keep going. Make that buffer even more comfortable, really. And we'll head over to Dan, who was uh, an audience to that uh, to that message. Was it a spray or was it just a message, Dan? Uh, definitely a, a message, a cool, calm and collected message from Huddy Fuller, uh, asking his team to match their energy but not become frenetic. He said, we need to lift but not go over the top. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. I think you probably can see a couple, not that it's about any one incident or, or player, uh, but you can probably see a few instances there where uh, they've done something great, but you know, with a low count or no count at all, kind of not valuing the disc, throwing it away. And, and right now, the level, as we said before, the level of their defence, it's not getting the disc back, really, um, outside of unforced errors from Ironbarks. So, yeah. sensible message from, uh, from Huddy Fuller. Let's see if Extinction can respond uh, and improve on the 4-1 start they find themselves in. Matt yeah, Hammer coming down with a pull. I was standing in the start going, I'm free of the Rocking a bit of an ET, the extraterrestrial style kind of <laughs> hoodie going on there. S expect to see him flying around on his bike, but anyway. It's good. Makes it easy for us to spot him on the field. 100%. <laughs> so there's Ruben and his bucket hat who receives the, uh, the pull. Sends a nice flick up the line. Nice Caught by the waiting extinction player. He sends a big flick up to Hunt, Hunter Collingwood. I mean, yeah, if you're Huddy Fuller on the sideline, that's exactly what you didn't want to see because that's the... As he walks past us, sorry, honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cold comfort. Um, it's it's easy when you're sitting down here, honey. Um, that's exactly what we're talking about. That that cool, calm, collected. Be you know more considered. Yeah. They had a great first throw, but then the second one goes straight away. It didn't yeah. need to. Didn't take a second to set. All right, I'm back underway. Pops it through to Matt Hannah. Hannah. Considering his options, chooses the reset. And a big flick set up, looking for Hannah himself. He's got oh, nice two ups. extension players, and unfortunately, oh, he's called a foul. There was a bit of contact in that. Uncontested. Yeah, foul uncontested. He got up. Uncontested foul? Yeah. So Hannah will retain the disc, but start um, on the side of the end zone line. Yeah. You're a player today, Ruben. Play your role. Disc is tapped in and everyone can move. Be interesting to see how composed Ironbark is on the start of the end zone line. Hannah looking for a dump. Well covered by Ruben. Finds one in the middle. Brunelli Brondex looking for an option. Finds a reset again in John O'Winter. This is the difference. And finally someone gets free that's, in the end zone. That's the difference between the two teams. Yeah. You look at, at the way the Ironbarks, as you said, call perfectly, you know, being patient, waiting for the right option to present, whereas Extinction are probably throwing without thinking. Dan. Yeah. The preparation for Ironbark was uh, broken as well. Since regionals, they've only managed to t train twice, and that was actually on the fields of NSU. They went to the synthetics to be able to get some, some run in and some game time in. Yeah, I would say it's a pretty common problem across Sydney. Most of the fields have been rained out. Um, there been a couple of beach trainings. I know Manly trained stealing the light of a netball court. <laughs> but you got to do what you got to do come nationals time. I'm not a Sydney sider, but my experience is uh, a light drizzle comes over and uh, they close half the fields in Sydney. So I can imagine that most, and, and obviously our regional New South Wales and Queensland colleagues have uh, had it pretty tough. Speaking of tough, how do you reckon the game advisors are going with Ruben as a player? It's kind of like <laughs> your boss is watching you <laughs> while you're trying to work. It'll be very, I, I, I hope in a positive way. I hope Ruben is involved in a call and just gets to quietly assess there. There were oh, you guys want another game? Well Yeah. Anyway. I'll give you your marks after the game. <laughs> Passing in. Passes it off to the far side of the field. Looking for an option, comes in to find one. Finally finds a fill. Corey Wakefield. Sends it out to Hingy. Sends a big flat backhand. It's going to be run and jumped <laughs> into the end zone by Jay Proctor. I think it's been called. Oh, 
not in. Is in. So have to start on the end zone line. Oh. May have called a travel. No, he couldn't. Now here's where we need to see the composure from Extinction. Can they wait for the right option to appear and, and bounce it back and forth? Well, oh, Hingey throws one, pops it up, but he's got plenty of space to catch that. Joe Proctor. Ah, uh, pick goal, pick goal. Second time now he's had to send it back after catching the goal. Ruben Bird to keep the disc. I think that's Wait. Luke Stark, Sorry. actually. That's I got right. confused. Bucket hats. Yeah, bucket hats. <laughs> so this is better from Extinction. You can see that they've made the most of the space. Stark looking for his dump. He's getting covered very well. Gets it backwards. Passing in. Not finding an option. Great Finally time. gets Hingy. He pops his through. And Toted. it's He's dropped. It anyway. That's a shame because Ironbark scored that twice. Oh, sorry, Extinction scored that twice. I don't know if either of them actually should have gone back. Yeah. Did it really affect the play? It would be interesting to see. Also, the goal. Sent deep ball. instantly. And Hingy. Well Hingie. done, Mile. Well Another done. tick for the application. I'll get oh. you a DD. And they should be applying for him. 5-1. And he picks it up himself. Out to Stark. Passing in. Getting it wide. Doesn't find many options downfield. Nice one. Donnelly. <laughs> pops it out. <laughs> Two extension players die for it, but Wakefield comes up. Sends a flick up for Hingy. Can oh, he keep this one in? No, it's slapped away. And picked up instantly. Kim G. Back in the middle of the field. Gaining some meters now. Braden Chang. Long Sends a backhand back that's going to fade outside the field. Longish point now. Probably an important one for Intention to actually lock in. Yeah. Keep this buffer a bit more manageable. Passing in to bring the disc in where it first went out, which is a bit further down from the end zone. A bit stuck on the sideline. That's Gets better. a reset to Stark. Swings it out to Hingy. Catches it under pressure. Finds Wakefield in the middle, and they've got some flow now. Pass it in, flings it up to Hingy, and he sends another cheeky hammer. Is it going to be a goal? And who's caught it? But I think our man, he's caught all three of the goals in that point, and this one yeah. might finally be allowed. Yeah, good point. There were uh, two goals that, that uh, point that were taken off. We've, we might uh, see a couple of them now, but my... I, Firstly, really good adjustment from Extinction. That's probably what we want to see. So this is the first. Oh, okay. That one's probably fair enough. I, I think he caught it by the time he... Mm, he jumped he, after. Yeah, jumped sorry. After yeah, the catch. exactly. So that one's fair enough. Here's Hingy's huge D. Climbs a ladder to get that one. This one was a bit of a hospital. Picked off by G. That one's definitely in. Jay Proctor catching three goals. Well, catching one. Catching yep. it three times. <laughs> Unfortunately, only one goes on the stat sheet. That's it. All right, Extinction running down to deep. Pull thrown up by Casey Webb. And it's fielded pretty comfortably by Ben Dougal. Mark already got some good flow. This is really good. Rochow. Out to Allen. Up to Hannah. Go, 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 
Lovely give goes from my box. Yeah. Daniel Hughes sends one deep and it's bounced out of the hands of the Iron Bark receiver. There's a travel call here, travel but call. I don't think it's affected the play. We'll see what happens when we sit in. It's going to be sent back to Hannah. Yeah, so for our viewers at home following along, there was a travel call, but ultimately the, uh, the disc was then turned over. So given it didn't affect the play, the players have elected to uh, allow the turnover to stand rather than sending it back. It essentially would have been like a freebie for... Um, for Ironbarks to get the disc back. Ironbark setting up in a zone on transition. A hammer used to break it again across field, now caught by Hunter throw. Collingwood. This is the throw they need to, uh, even if the zone readjusts, that's okay. Yep. Better than a turnover. And gaining metres up the field as you go. Huddy Fuller. Back to Huddy Fuller. Out wide now. Give go between Hunt Smith. And another hammer. Two in a row. This is looking like. <laughs> nice work from Timothy Hunt Smith there. That was good. And good composure. Be well, better composure from extinction. Just yes. To be able to. Okay, we've got a bit of flow. That's all right if the zone resets. You'd rather that than try and rush it and have a, an unforced error turnover. Because essentially, they just repeated it. It was two cross field hammers. Quite, quite nice ones, mm. I'd add. Uh, pretty flat. Hard for a defender. That one, they showed a little bit more of it to the defender, but. Knew where he was going, threw him into the space. And that's why the strategy of the zone on in these kind of conditions is a little bit questionable because those overhead throws should be fairly easy and fairly predictable to catch. Yeah, there are two or three of them there that connected, so you, you think if you see a couple more, especially because I feel like Ironbark probably have the edge athletically, mm. so back yourself in to beat them one on one. Uh, but also, what's interesting about tournaments is you're trying to learn as you as you play as well. So if they're if the intent for them and they are performing quite well, so they will feature in the pointy end um, of the tournament most likely. Maybe they're saying, look, let's work on our zone because we know we might put, need to pull it out in a later game. Yes. And uh, that pull just out of bounds. Brick call by Ian Watt. Take it to the middle of the field, about the third of the way down. Extinction set up his own and it's instantly successful. Tries to throw it through the middle and it's smacked away by Joel Young. This is going to be picked up by Rubenberg. That is the correct bucket hat this time. He finds Inji very free. He, he <laughs> looks to throw a hammer, but resets it back to Berg. Turns a backhand out wide, dive and catch. And Young pops it through to Mike Bode. Good work by Extinction. Nice little goal. mini comeback. And a little bit of discontent coming through. You can hear on the uh, on the audio. Bit of confusion as to what the force was. It is first game of the day, and oftentimes those first few points can be a bit shaky just because your body's remembering how to play Frisbee. So it looks like Extinction's maybe brought back a bit of their composure, feeling a bit more settled with the disc, and making better decisions when they throw. Yeah, 100%. I, you know, the last few points of the game have uh, absolutely been Extinction's. And a little bit of frustration probably setting in for Ironbarks, and rightly so, because they... Absolutely jumped out of the blocks, but have kind of gone asleep a little bit. Had two breaks in a row put in on them. Uh, and we're back to having quite a close game. Uh, pull sent up by Hinji. He can do it's it all, hanging. this man. He can do it all. Going to fall a bit forward in the field. Oh! 
sent through. Casey Lai. Daniel Chu in the middle of the field. Tim G sends one up. That's a nice throw. Mitch Hanna. That was the response that was demanded. That was the response that was given. Well done from Ironbarks. That's very similar to the first point of the game. Probably their primary reception play yeah. uh, to a nice open long shot. Discussion with Extinction talking about who's going on. Nice throw. Easy run on goal. As we mentioned, this is one of many games going on this morning uh, over in the field opposite. Mammoth versus Chile. That one we believe is a close one. We'll try and get a score and bring it to you shortly. They're in a timeout currently. Mitch Hanna setting up the pool. Just going to be a nice, easy field. Berg dropping back to Passenden. Ironbark putting another zone on. Inji straight away breaking it with a hammer. Over to Berg, nice and free. Sends oh. a big outside in backhand. Is it going to fall for Proctor? Yeah, that's a goal. Wow, we. Oh, and look at the strut on Berg. Oh, he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> Pistol Pete Berg. He knows it, he likes it. It was caught maybe four centimetres inside the, the line, so. I wouldn't be getting too up and about if I was him. He'll say but that's exactly yeah, where exactly, he wanted yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Inside out. That had to be pinpoint as well because uh, your man, uh, Rochow, was uh, closing in pretty quickly. If it was any further in the field, he would have had a bit of that. Good awareness by Proctor too. He started pointing his feet, making sure they stayed in. Yeah. Yeah, had to tow it. Oh, a little tumble move after. I didn't notice yeah. that either. Having a good game, Proctor. Caught a couple now. All right. Extinction with another chance to break. Bring the scores level. Pull sent up by Casey Webb. Here we go, Ironbark. Let's go, Ironbark. It's going to roll Ooh. past. The Ironbark player. Varela centers. Rayside gets one through the middle. Hannah. One on one. Pops it backwards. What? One ahead of catch over Nelly Rondex. It's pretty cash, wasn't it? Finds Hannah out wide. Resets to the middle. Looking for a good option. Slung into Hannah's hands in front of the end zone now. And he sends a bit of a arcing flick to the break side. Once again, pretty easy score for Ironbark. There wasn't too much effort made to get free and get the disc. Yeah, I think Extinction made them throw a couple of more throws than that, that standard reception play. Uh, but uh, there's still work that they, uh, they need to do. As we head over to Dan, who's got an update from around the grounds. Yeah, from around the grounds, Andy Moroni, we have uh, status quo up 6-4 against Branch, and on the field next to us, uh, Chile up 8-2 in their game against Mammoth. That one's not close. Uh, they just took half. Yeah, complete opposite of what I actually said, so that's, uh, that's awesome. Chile, one of the informed teams, clearly by that, uh, by that score line. I did think it would be close, though. Does Mammoth have two teams this year, or are they just in Div 2? Uh, I think they've got a Div 1 team. It's good to see they're expanding their club, though. Agreed. Alright. Ball sent out by Matthew Tam. Caught pretty easily. They get a few passes off of the defense's set. 
Looks like another zone from Ironbark. Collingwood yeah. gets a hand to it. it. Doesn't catch. You can take half here. Tim G. Throws backwards to get to the centre of the field. Matthew Tam. Back to Tim G. Oh. A good catch under pressure. And a diving grab by Chang. A very low throw to Tim G. Just too far in front. And a backhand that's going to blade a bit. Falls too short of Collingwood. Tim back to G. Chang in the middle of the field. Tam sends a flick deep. Bang, Ruben Berg over the back. I thought for a second there might have been a call. I was going to enjoy it immensely. But Ruben, given he literally wrote the rule book. Yep. Does know how to do things by the book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if not, he'll just rewrite it. It's good, it's good to be king. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to look to send one, but then centre it and be safe. Collingwood catches one under pressure. Better from Collingwood there. That's what you want to do. Joel Young pops one through. Merlet sends one that's going to oh. fade out the side. I'm not entirely sure that's the angle he was going for. No, I don't think he's happy with it. That is not the face of a happy man. <laughs> he knows that. But once again, that's them not thinking and setting themselves. Just, just not taking a second. And yeah. yeah, He'll be wearing that because... That's been Huddy's message. It's been the message of the half, which uh, Ironbark now have a chance to take. Tim G in the middle of the field. They're very deep. They're way too deep. So that, that deep space, it'll open up now. But it was completely cut off for about two or three throws there. Tam finds G out wide. In the middle of the field, Gio. Oh, half a sniff. Casey Lye. Sends a flick. It's going to be in front of the extinction player, but... Whoa! A racing Tim Merlet gets there first. That's redemption. That's redemption. That's the same player that uh, threw it away. to term to get it back for his team, and he has. So, good on him. I don't think the Ironbark player even knew he was there. It was no. almost like they were just running on. I think he thought he was free. Sent deep straight away. Deed again. Tam back to G. Deep stack. Yeah. Casey Lai. Finds Cheng. Throws to G up the line. There's a travel called a few throws back. Needs to be returned to Casey Lye. Travel called by Ruben, so by law, you're not allowed to contest it. So everyone has to go back to where they were before that throw, which was a little while ago now, so probably not entirely accurate. Resets back to Tam, finds G out wide. He sends a cheeky hammer, Ooh. and it bounces through the hands and into the chest of Cheng. Extinction starting straight away. Bursting house finds Berg in the middle. This one might go. No. Deed by Daryl Chiu. And the oh, flick sent up for him straight stop. away. Double happiness. He turns around and says, look at me. And that's half. Huge play to uh, close off the half. Both teams with uh, an opportunity at that point. Yeah, lots of turns, lots of good pressure defense, and maybe a little less composed offense. Yeah, good run through D from Chu. Literally didn't stop. A couple of Ds at that point, that was the first. Looks Arbic. like Daniels with a man, Hunter Collingwood, middle of the field. Yeah, here with the young Hunter Collingwood, mate. Looks like you're enjoying your ultimate out there. Yeah, look, it's good fun. I've done it for four years-ish, and 
loving it. These tournaments are just amazing since COVID. Is this the first time you've come to Nationals? Uh, actually third time, so I've played twice in youth um, games and this is the first Opens slash over 18s I've done. So. Well, you're looking right at home out there. I'll let you get back to the huddle. Yeah, cheers, mate. Andy, back to you. Thanks, Dan. Uh, might want to see if we can get uh, Hunter Collingwood a burger. He, is about, he looks about 40 kilos dripping wet, so <laughs> looks like a quick boy too. Anyway, we'll take a short break and uh, leave you with the highlights of the first half. As we have Ironbark leading Extinction 8-5. to five. We'll be back with the second half shortly. Welcome back to the Australian Ultimate Championships Division 2. Day 2, Game 1. With the second half, Ironbark versus Extinction. Ironbark took the first half, 8-5. Uh, but Anna, Extinction fought back, probably had a really quite a slow start. I think mm. they were 5-1 down, um, or certainly looking down the barrel of it. Uh, but they were able to, uh, to respond and fight back, which was good. Yeah, they were 5-4 at one point. Managed to get a few breaks in a row. So they're definitely capable of it. Uh, they probably do it again, bring it level, maybe make it a tight end to the game. The advantage for Extinction is that they'll be coming out on offense. Uh, so they'll have a first look at uh, closing it up to 8 6. Uh, I think they're actually just looking around for yeah. the game disc. <laughs> Doesn't look like either team has the disc at the moment. Yeah. I find it is a, a game that's more helpful to be played when you when you have a frisbee. I've got one now. Just waiting to get underway. Mitch Hanna with the pull. It's gonna hold up, it's gonna roll a little bit. Tap by Duan Vorden. Thrown over the top. Wow. Proctor. Finds Hunt Smith out wide and sends a very bladey flick that doesn't come back in. Oh, 
Another example of perhaps your first instinct and first decision might not be the best one. Yeah, I think you're spot on. It's taking that half a second. And Dougal to come in on the line. Really nice. Finds Hannah across the other side of the field. He sends a flick straight away. <laughs> Daniel Bangane. Too easy. Nice and quick. Not a lot of energy exerted to get that break. What I really like, though, is that move off the line. Yeah. That was, you know, a lot of teams, and we saw it yesterday, you kind of get stuck being funneling down the sideline, which makes it a lot easier to defend. The really intentional look from the iron bar straight away was looking into that far space, as you'll see, gets thrown into. Mild bites, little little nibble, but opened up all that space, swings it. No, that, that is quite literally a drill. Yeah. No, that's, that's, uh, when you're learning the game, um, you run a lot of drills, and, and that's one of them, to swing it into the open space and then throw up field. A lot of less experienced teams will get sucked into just looking up field in that first throw. I've got to throw it up, I've got to throw it up. But the wiser thing to do is really to look laterally for the space first, and then you can attack down that uh, other side. Yeah, get the defense in the back foot. Don't put it where they're expecting it to come. Matthew Hanna. Just got to get Wants a another disc. Kick. Yeah. I think that disc, that uh, the game disc that was being used actually got scratched uh, on the goal. So, copped a bit of damage. Sub a replacement disc in. Probably another disc lying around these fields somewhere. Oh, I think we'd find one or two. Good pull. Yeah, big deep pull. That's the best pull today. Pulled by passing in. Out to Fuller. Gets a few passes off before the defense comes down. Out wide to Wakefield. Back to Passenden, but it's slapped away. Ooh. And not able to be caught back in by Passenden. Ian Watt going to come back in on the line. He looks forward for a little bit. Chooses to send it to Hannah. Out wide. Rayside, through back to what? Sends a big backhand up above. And it's caught. A little jump. Nice high grab. It's one more for Ironbark, 10-5. And we all may always must comment on the bravery of our production crew. I think that was Dom there on our uh, on our low camera, just as there was a fair bit of attention on the close sideline. Dan, you were right there as well. How are you yeah. going? Yeah, I just have that frisbee that uh, they, they brought back. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but it's uh, pretty badly tarcoed. So as it flies through the air, it'll, it'll tend to wobble because of that. Um, Normally what happens is that lots of players like to replace that disc as soon as it, it gets even the slightest little bit of angle on it. That's right. 175 grams of plastic, so any, you're right, any kind of uh, bending or gouging makes life a little bit harder. Come on. Oh, yeah. Probably put some salsa and mince in that. <laughs> I like that one. That was good. Thank you. Tarcoat, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Dan going to come down with the pool this time. Ends are up. And the disc is flying. It's going to hang for a little bit. Give Ironbark some time to get down there. Caught and sent it to Berg. Finds Hinge. Looks at his options, chooses to dump back to Stark. Webb. Pretty young. Oh, and a one-handed grab doesn't go so well. That's sent deep straight away. What a play. What an excellent play. Stephen Rochow. You'll actually be able to see Rochow start his cut from so short. Yeah. And, but really committed to the cut. 
ran past two extinction yep. players. So that was quite athletic as well. It hurts being piled on a little bit now. Iron Buck scored three in a row after half. Buffers stretched out to six. So see where he started that cut. He was yep. basically in line with the cutter. Threw it over the top of three extinction players who were deep, but didn't pick it up as soon as the throw was uh, was released. You wouldn't be calling that offside in football. <laughs> yeah. Lovely throw too. Nice, flat. No wobble, as Dan was saying. That's the way you want the Frisbee to come out. Nice and flat, predictable. And like you say, Ironbark probably coming out the more switched on out of halftime of the two teams when really that needed to be the message to Extinction. 5-8 has now quickly turned into 11-5. Mitch Hanna sends one up. It's going to be caught. Centered. Get a few passes off, get down the field a bit. Zone's been put on. They throw through the middle to Hanna, who intercepts. And Ironbark are straight away on the money. Resets back. I'm going to poach out wide. Allen sends one through to Hannah. He looks into the end zone. Can he find an option? A cheeky little backhand. Through to Bangade. And that's another one for Ironbark. And what was really impressive about as a, a timeout is called now from Extinction. I think they've realised that the wheels, perhaps not off, but they're certainly shaky. Uh, what I really like there... Was Rochow. You probably saw him. He came, you can see him on the back of, uh, back of screen. He was that first cut that went into the end zone, uh, but realised he wasn't going to get it. Now, a lot of players will just kind of hang out and maybe try again and try again, and they clog that whole space for their teammates. But he cleared really efficiently like over to the wide side, and that gave Bangane then the space. Um, and I think that's what we've probably remarked on a couple of times is Ironbark playing really well as a unit. Mm. You know, they know what they're you know, clearly trained together. Yes, it's been interrupted, but... Um, you know, they've played together for a number of years, so they know their structure, they know their systems. Uh, and it's good to see them putting it to use there and putting a little bit of hurt now on Extinction. Fuller again has the team in. Dan will be listening in. Dan, is it still a message or is it closer to a spray? What's the, uh, what's the instruction from Huddy? No, it's still a message. Uh, Huddy asking uh, his team to stop pushing their throws, start winning with your legs, trust your legs to run it out. He's going to call a line here and see how that goes. Thanks, Dan. Good point. We've said it ourselves, probably the composure is not what's going to plan for Extinction right now. No, they get a few good passages of play and then yep. get over very excited about the fact that they're getting flow and then probably push one yeah. one too far. And that's probably what the message has to be. It's like, hey, we're doing good things, but they're just getting overshadowed by the bad thing that we do when we yep. we get a bit giddy with it. So, yep. um, you know, if, if nothing was going to plan at all, okay, that's, that's tough, you know. But the fact that they are actually getting something right, um, it's about... Okay, let's look at that. Let's focus on that and remove the the part, you know, that last 10% that's bringing it all undone. Yep. So they've called the line of their more experienced players, players like uh, Berg and Hingy. I think they both played really well. Yep. Uh, slotted in really well with this Ironbarks team. It's still got some young legs and Collingwood and Proctor as well. Yep. Experience and athleticism. Berg catches that one. Sends it to Webb. Mellet out wide. Webb looks around, takes his time. Finds Hingy in the middle. Pops it through to pass it in. Fakes a big flick. Throws it backwards to Berg. Pass it in to Berg. They're cutting through the zone pretty easily at the moment. And then there's that throw, the one too far. And I'm like a back on O. Hannah. The dagger here. Sends it up. John o Winter. Nice Collingwood work, gets up. Big fella. Flings it over his head. A scuba oh <laughs> just gets to Berg, who sends another flick to Proctor. Is he going to beat Hannah for the disc? He, he does. is. That's a monster grab. And there's more strut. There's more strut coming from oh, Arthur. the finger guns. <laughs> K 
Can that lift his team? Full field, Huck. Really good throw, really nice contested grab as well as we head over to Dan Clinton. Well, Tim G has just proved prophetic. Uh, he mentioned that their run has come from taking away the deep shot for Extinction. As soon as they get a good look, it works out again for them and they score for the first time in a long time. Nice D from Collingwood as well to get that back. Scuba over the top. And this time on the forehand side, his first arc was a backhand. Just showing everyone at home and here that he can do it both sides. And I reckon a really nice uh, contested grab by Jay Proctor. I'd say that's his third. Finger guns out. He's vibing it. He's feeling it. Yeah, a good combination of experience and youth there. D by Collingwood. Contested grab by Proctor. And a nice composed throw by Berg to bookend it. Well, it was a contested grab. I think what Ruben did quite nicely was put it to the advantage of his player. Mm -hmm. So even if there was a contest... It was going to be really hard for um, for Hannah to get through without fouling as well. Iron Mark now halfway down the field. Cheng throws back to Tim G. He asks for them to come into the middle of the field, make some space in the sides. It's out wide. Through to Cheng. He sends a big flick up. It's to the advantage of his player. And he catches it as <laughs> Zudenborn thunders in behind him. It's not always easy to catch when you can hear that's that kind of noise it. behind you. And as a defender, that's what you know. You, you know, sometimes just being close and applying that pressure can force the air up. But not that time. Einbach's continuing to pull away. 13-6. It'll be a game to 15. There is a bit of time left if Extinction wants to go on a run, but they probably need to do it soon. <laughs> Don't have many more chances to waste. Ironbark's again keeping it really nice and tight in that, that stack formation, which is where the players will congregate if they're not cutting, if they're not making a play for the disc. Leaving that space out of back to run onto. Shannon puts his hand up. Sends a very flat pull that's going to roll and land about halfway down. This is a good chance for extinction. Yeah. They don't have to throw too many passes to get down. I wouldn't say that was pull of the day, Anna. No. Full up. Here we go. Here, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Instantly with the flick. It's a go. <laughs> that's the Ruben Hello. show. Very happy. Some real swagger on him now. You can tell from the pool reception, you'll actually see Ruben moved around from the dump position to get the easy throw from, from Fuller. Yep. Because he could see wide up top that there was a free player. So you see Ruben comes around the back. See the player top right of your screen. Hand Unmarked. up. Yep. Excellent throw. So some late highlights for Extinction. Can it lift them? Not sure. Certainly got their work cut out for him. Rochelle probably wasn't doing the wrong thing in defending the deep space. It's much more likely that the throw is going to come towards the open side. Yeah, that's the throw you want to bait. But Ruben's uh, been throwing gems like that for about 15, 20 years. So. Pull centre. Gonna land in the hands. What? Someone's starting to lift for extinction. They know that uh, this is pretty much the game right here. Is they what might has get to a chase it. Does a bit of a dive and a roll, but he keeps hold of it. Sends a flick up. One-handed grab. Nelly Brundex sends it up the line of what? Keeps it in. Better from Extinction. He's More pressure. looking to centre. He's looking to get it off the line. Throws it across field. Brunelli Brondex again. Hannah. Pops it back to what? The pick's been called. 
before the froze, it'll go back to what? Better from Extinction. They're starting to lift that offensive, uh, the defensive, sorry, intensity. So we're figuring out what the stall count's going to come in on. Looks like stalling two. Finds a free player. Brunelli Brondex. He's looking in the end zone. He finds a dump cut from Watt. It goes straight into the end zone for the goal. Once again, that discipline from the other from his teammates pulling the uh, their defenders out of that space to allow him to move into. And that brings up game points. So Ironbark only need one more score to win this opening match of the day. Great grab by Watt. Watt keeping the disc alive at the start of the point and finishing the job at the end of it. Right. An error clearly being made by Extinction here. Ruben Berg seems to be on the sideline. I'm not sure why. Maybe they've grown tired of his attention-seeking antics. Hollywood Berg, as he's become known. Puller uh, commanding the line. I'm back looking for one more break. This game away. Played really well as a unit. You can see that chemistry as a team. Cam sends it up. It's fielded by Puller. Puller again. Wow. Sends a flick deep Go to Collingwood. Fella. It's sitting well. He jumps it in. And that's a nice, quick, easy goal for extension, which is exactly what they want. And Huddy's happy as well. Look at that big smile. Didn't need Berg. Ruben who? <laughs> it's nice to see Hunter Collingwood having a smile and a good time. We uh, got to have a quick chat to that young man with Dan. He was having a good time. So, caught a few goals and got a few Ds so far this game. Really nice young, uh, sorry, flat throw from Huddy. Yeah, sat just in front the entire time. Very easy to do. Yeah, really nice. He's happy. He's having a good time. All right, this is the point where Extinction absolutely has to pile on defensive pressure. They can't let any easy, easy open throws come off because yeah. this is their last chance, really, to get a break and continue getting them. Passenden sends a very flat pull. It's going to land just in front of the brick mark. Picked up by Hannah. It's going to make life hard. Send it back to Hannah. He sends a flick upfield. It's caught by Hugh. Holsters. Dougal. Oh, oh yeah, and it bounces out of the hands of Chenk. Instantly set up a zone, Iron Bar. Passes and picks up. Passes to Hingy. It's free downfield. Pops it off to Berg. A blade across field to Webb. Back to Passes in the middle of the field. Berg wide. The corner's very crowded, but he froze to Hingy in front of a diving Iron Bar player. Nice from Extinction. They're not going to die wondering. Got the break. And, you know, we've spoken about the fact that a, a, a tournament's quite unique because you don't just kind of play one game a week and then you have another, you know, practice center, you know, trainings and stuff like that. You play three games in a day across three days, uh, more often than not. So for Extinction, it's as much about kind of building the energy for their next game as it is about finishing off this one. So if they kind of just roll over and, you know, pretty flat, um, it, they really struggle to take any yeah. energy from it. Whereas if you have a little bit of a fight back, even if you don't end up taking the, um, taking the win, at least 
you've got some energy so that that first huddle of the next game you can say hey look we didn't have a great start because they got jumped at the start you know that 5-1 deficit was pretty hard to come back from we got jumped at the start but we finished really well so let's take the end of that game and use that to dictate the, the energy of our, our next game continue onwards and they know they've got it in them now Let's see how much they've got left. Ironbark need one more goal. Extinction six. Mile Hinge. That's a better pull. Yeah. That'll go all the way. I've done it. With the wind. Anna, I've done it. It's pushed it out. 4 3 to me on oh, commentators' yep. curses. First of the day. It's brought to the brick mark. And sent deep straight away. Hannah's there. Good grab. Really good pace. He's got too. such good composure. His back is to the end zone. And that's me. That's yeah. that's one for yeah, me. Yeah, four, four, four all. <laughs> First blemish from Hannah too. Uh, I think he's had quite a good game. Inji back to Doom Warden. They've got to get shorter. I don't know what. Stark in the middle. All that Looking for a way through. Off. Goes wow. out wide. And Come on, Collingwood. Oh, Hunter. He does dive, but bounces off the fingertips. What to bring it to the line? Throws one up high. Ironbuck comes down with it. Hannah. Has to hold up. There's no one really in front of the disc. There is now. Pops it over to Varela, who manages to keep hold. Back to Hannah. He looks downfield. He's trying oh, to find an candy. option. Finds Winter out wide. He pops a big flip out the hand of it. He can't quite reach it in his outstretched hands, and it's taken by extinction. Proctor. All the way out to Stark on the far side of the field. And that's overthrown. In front of Peter Gordon, who loses his hat in the process. I need him to wear that hat so I know who he is. <laughs> All right. Einbach's third shot at it this point. What? Race side. Finds Hannah. Quick one pop through. And it's getting it at will right now. Really, Rondex. Long guy. Johnny Winter. Pick call. Holds it, but there's a pick. I think a deep breath here from Ironbark. So at their brick mark, something they've done actually quite well the entire game is this composure in the red zone. Gets a dump backwards. Weston finds Hannah Fords. It's Rayside out wide. Oh, no. Hannah shakes his player. <laughs> oh, no. Looking for the end zone, but doesn't find anyone free. It sends a scuba to the back corner. And that's the game. Jono Winter with the final catch of the game. And that composure in, you know, in that red zone, probably representative of the game. Yeah. They did it really well once they got it to that, uh, you know, five, ten metres out. Nice hand block there. Reese Lodding. That's, That's just fatigue. Yeah, he knew it straight away. He was filthy on himself. <laughs> and this was Hunter Collingwood. So oh. close. And it's the winning goal. Of course it's a scuba. Happy with it. Been a fair few overhead goals this game. 
as we'll soon head over to Dan Clinton, who has a couple of players, uh, starting with Tim G. Dan. Yeah, I've managed to grab uh, Matt Hanna and Tim G. Uh, we'll start with you, Matt. You had a great game out there. Thank you very much. It's a bit tiring, but you know. Well, that's what we're here for. Um, you've been playing for a while now? Yeah, I think I started playing when I was about 12, and I'm, what, 22 now, so it's uh, 10 years. <laughs> that's excellent. I'm noticing you're wearing some Australian gear. What, uh, what teams did you play for? I played for uh, Aussie Thunder in 2016 and 2018. All right, well, thank you. Congratulations, Tim G, to you. Uh, you've got some young fans at home. Yeah, yeah, I've got my three boys at home, Max, Will and Lucas. Hi, boys. So they were very keen. They, before every game down at training, they always yell out to the team, make sure you don't throw it, throw it only to your team, then you'll win the game every day. So That's they, some they excellent advice yeah. to uh, not throw it to the other guys. You've had a good win here, Tim. What's ex um, your, your goals for the tournament, do you think? Uh, we're definitely into the quarters and then it just comes down to how hard you play in that game and the matchup you get. We took Mudlarks, the number one seed, to 15-13 yesterday, so we know we've got the depth throughout to really push those uh, teams that won it last year, so we feel good where, where we're headed. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Back to you, Andy. Thanks, Dan. Well done to the Ironbarks. Well done to Tim G. Well done, most of all, to Tara G. Three boys at home, my goodness, and he's up here playing Frisbee. Anyway, all right, uh, that's it for this game. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we do have four more games to bring you uh, throughout the course of the morning and the afternoon. So please stick around. We'll, uh, we'll tune back in shortly. Catch you next time.